Okay, so we might get started. So first of all, I'd like to welcome everyone who is watching. Um, thank you for coming along. This is, um, I think, number seven of our Townsville Enterprise web webinars that we've done in regards to tourism. Um, and I would like to welcome Ashley McCulloch and Kylie Dennis from AJ Gallagher. Today, they will be talking about managing risk and insurance during these difficult times. I'm sure you will all find it very interesting and helpful. Um, just a reminder that if you do have any questions, you can ask them at any time in the question and answers box, but we will have a section at the end of the webinar once the presentation has finished um, for Ashley and Kylie to answer any of those questions. So now I would like to um, pass over to Ashley. Uh, thanks, Megan, and welcome everyone to our session today. So look, today we're just going to provide a brief session on managing risk and insurance during these difficult times. Um, we know the environment, the environment for all is changing, uh, includes us presenting these webinars. Um, we would typically do this in front of a group. Um, so it's, it's a changing environment and we all need to get used to this as a new normal. So as Megan said, my name's Ashley McCulloch. So I'm the branch manager of Gallagher North Queensland. And today I'm joined by my colleague, Colly Dennis. Um, who is one of our leading insurance brokers here in, in North Queensland. Who's Gallagher? So Gallagher is an insurance risk management and consulting business. Um, we thank TEL for the opportunity to share some insights into the changing and difficult landscape of today's world. Um, and we're just going to pro provide you a brief presentation this morning, um, no more than 30 minutes, um, and feel free to ask some questions along the way through the Q&A box, as Megan mentioned. So to kick things off, Uh, so the agenda we're going to go through today. So we're going to talk about some managing risk uh, in our world. Uh, we're going to go into the insurance considerations that go with managing your risk. Uh, talk a bit about broker communication and the importance of working with a, a broker as a relationship. Uh, and then we'll close with a Q&A at the end. So into managing risk. So. Owning a business or operating a business in today's world is forever changing. Um, it's difficult enough without throwing in COVID-19. So responsibilities of business owners right at this time are extreme highs to meet government restrictions, to trade breaches, um, to trade and breaches could result in significant implications to the business uh, or the individuals if we don't meet those restrictions. Uh, the landscape always is continuing changing. Uh, we heard the good news from the government on Sunday about opening up sort of more of Queensland for Queenslanders that will help with the tourism industry. Um, so these are changes that are happening without sort of any warning. Uh, and we need to be aware of what that means for us in our business as well. I guess as the rate of COVID-19 infection drops in Australia, governments are continually to open up more um, getting businesses back to as much or as close to possible as normal as previously. Um, what that will look like in the future and the return to workplace, um, I think it'll be different forever. Uh, I don't think we'll return to exactly the same normal we were ever in before. I think there'll be some changes and implications that, um, that will continue forever coming in. I guess the restrictions we're in place at the moment they're going to be in place until a vaccine has been developed. Uh, the, the coronavirus is easily transmitted uh, and it is something that will, will be around forever until there's a vaccine uh, provided. So we need to adopt the new normal. We need to change our work habits, our personal habits, um, and make sure we're providing a safe and healthy environment for all. Um, so big things businesses need to consider is how they operate their workplace. Um, the first priority is returning to the workplace for health and safety in regards to your employees and those that are running customers into their workplace. Um, obviously you need to build that into your business plans as well. So you need to take action and follow some steps and make sure you're mitigating the, uh, the risk of transmitting COVID-19. At the end of the day, no one wants to be uh, the virus to spread in their own businesses. So we need to all play the part and stop that. Um, you wouldn't want your business to be in the media either. Uh, that's causing the spread of COVID-19. It would just be damaging. 
So what are things we need to consider regarding returning to the workplace? And as I mentioned before, this is going to be about returning to the new normal. Um, it's not going to be returning to where we were before. And I know this is really challenging because for me, trying to set up my team, returning to the office safely at the moment, uh, there's a lot of measures that we have, have to take in place uh, to meet government restrictions uh, and also the safety of our, our clients and our staff. So things to consider, as I put on the screen now, understanding the practicalities of a phased return. Um, there's areas in our business that we're not going to have all of um, all of our staff and team returning at the one time. Uh, identifying and managing the risk involved in operating your business taking into account the business duty of care for employees, uh, facilitating and progressing the necessary planning, uh, incorporating best practice and being more flexible with your working arrangements with your staff, uh, adopting changes to people management and developing supporting protocols. Uh, and obviously throughout all this, we need to meet government restrictions uh, and for your team and clients. So social distancing and safe work practices are critical. I'm sure everyone is used to the fact that we've all had hand sanitizing, wiping down areas. Um, use of common areas is sort of becoming uh, apparent that it's it should not be used, or if so, it should have high restrictions in hygiene. So this is the new norm, and this is something we have to get used to. Um, look, we know as a business, uh, as an insurance and risk management business, we know this is very hard for business owners to get their head around. Um, we've set up our workplace risk team. Uh, we have a really good team in sort of most capital cities. They've set up some webinars to help our customers as well. Uh, and I thought I'd share one that is happening next week uh, for feel free to people to participate in. Uh, the webinar is purely just to help you around returning your business to the new normal uh, and how you're going to take it, um, take it from there. It's, as I said, it's going to be changing and it's going to be changing the landscape forever. Um, so during that webinar, feel free to join. I can share this information afterwards as well. Um, but it's about planning the risk. If you're not joining the webinar, I guess I'd mention as well, um, you need to make sure you're considering these in your work plans. Um, so planning your aspects of COVID-19, return to business. Um, understanding the importance and practicalities of reconditioning gradual returns, um, identify and manage any potential safety risks associated with re returning to the new normal. Uh, and a big thing for us is we've got a lot of meeting rooms in our offices. Um, you can only have so many people in those rooms now uh, with your 1.5 distancing, where before I could run an, a boardroom full of 15 people, staff that we have uh, in a meeting. Today, that room can only have a capacity of six people. Those are things we've got to consider in changing to the new norm uh, and doing webinars like this won't just happen externally, but it's happening internally as well. Um, your people management, you need to really consider the safety of your, co uh, of your colleagues and how you manage those. Uh, and then identifying any gaps in previous operations and continually strategizing and consider strategies to address these. So I thought, Given the spotlights on Queensland at the moment, we've opened some doors. Uh, we want businesses to get back out and trading. Uh, that's potentially a useful webinar uh, for you to participate in uh, next week. So what's next in regards to business continuity? Um, so business continuity remains firmly in the spotlight at the moment. Um, and these are business continuity plans that each business should have about what they are going to do should something impact them from doing business. Um, we know COVID-19 has virtually locked us down. Um, strong recommendations to work from home. Some businesses were even shut down overnight by governments in certain industries of um, tourism, uh, hospitality and the like. So, so these are things we need to build into our business in continuity plans and make sure we have a plan in place um, that how are you going to operate or how are you going to continue to run your manager business uh, and make sure you're not continually spending and driving uh, costs through the business when you don't have revenue coming in. 
Look, the best people to write your business continuity plans are yourselves as your business owners and operators. Um, you know your business best uh, and you need to consider what factors uh, are potentially going to impact your business and how can you run your business in the future following those factors. Us as insurance advisors can help you through some of those processes. Um, we, we can help you understand what are some of those business continuity plans risks and what you can actually place insurance for. But some, like the impacts of COVID-19, there is no uh, insurance coverage you can provide for that. So it's around how do you have a strong plan in place uh, to make sure your workforce is safe, your business can continue to trade where possible. And I guess, as we're seeing a lot of businesses do in our region, diversify um, their business to meet the new restrictions. Uh, we've seen a lot of restaurants go into takeaway and delivery services. So um, those are changes that you need to build into your plans to make sure you're driving revenue and growth um, to sustain your business for the future. Um, so on the screen is just some points that we strongly recommend people need to consider and build into their business continuity plans. Um, and we have some experts in our business that can certainly help you write those plans. Um, we'll help you understand those things you need to consider. Us as insurance experts can certainly help you understand um, the, the risks you have in your business and what you can pass on of those risks to an insurance provider uh, to provide you a safety net um, that may cover you for your loss of trade and your loss of uh, business income. So you need to look, look at cash flow. Cash is king in this sort of world at the moment. Um, you need to make sure you, you understand your cash flow and where you have situations with deferral payments and what do they look like. Um, you need to have a robust position on operational and financial risks. Um, what are your obligations as a director or officer of the business? Uh, what does your return to workplace look like? Uh, what are the risk considerations being in there? And what do you have in regards to debtor and creditor provisions? Um, what do you have outstanding? Um, if your systems were crashed from a cyber attack, which Kylie will talk about in the future, um, what do you have from a um, safety net to know what, who owes you money? Um, where's your trading environment? Um, I guess we've all looked at working from home. A lot of businesses have. I know our businesses across Australia and the world has sort of significantly changed. Um, our workforce from a Gallagher perspective has sent 35,000 staff to work from home uh, pretty well within a few weeks. Uh, and they've done that pretty, pretty well and pretty consistently across the world. And that's due to having good continuity plans in place. So really understanding your own environment and what that looks like. Um, and then what other risks come with that regarding cyber safety uh, your regulatory compliance, your safety of IP data. Um, you got to continue to meet your other obligations regarding contractual or commercial leases. Um, your contracts with suppliers, um, they may have conditions in there that you need to continue to meet even though you're not operating from your site. Um, and obviously, flowing on with all that, you need to review that with your insurance provider and make sure you're providing any uh, or closing any gaps or exposures that that may bring to your business. Um, so a, a key piece we'll talk about today is, is having a good relationship with an insurance uh, provider, preferably an insurance broker, um, and how they can help you through those, uh, managing those risks. Uh, ultimately, diversification is having comprehensive risk management process in place and will be the key to business continually, uh, continuing and surviving. So. Um, You've got to think differently. You've got to look that this is your business right now, uh, but how can you operate differently in the future should something major happen to your site? Um, as I said, reach out to your insurance partner who can help you with these plans uh, and can help you sort of understand where insurance sits in that picture. Um, I guess a big thing with with business inter, uh, business continuity plans is research in indicates that a quarter of Australian businesses have been impacted by a natural disaster or extreme weather event, uh, and the heavily impacted areas are accommodation and food services sector. Um, so these plans need to be in place for all businesses, but they are said highlighted in the accommodation, food services areas, uh, and tourism will fit into that area as well. Um, 
we know there's a lot of talk about climate change um, and we, no one really knows what is right and what is wrong. But I guess the research indicates the frequency and severity of these major storm events and weather events are going to continue. Um, they're going to continue to increase. And the prediction on a, um, a, a recent survey, or not survey, but research has indicated uh, that business interruption uh, is the top, one of the top five categories of that businesses are facing globally at the moment. So we need to be mindful of this, build this into your, your plans uh, and engage with your insurance providers around those. COVID-19 is bringing no difference. Uh, I guess COVID-19 brought a complete different perspective in regards to shut every business down across the globe virtually. Um, and I guess made it really difficult for people to understand what that looks like and the uncertainty of how long this is going to be until we're op operational. Now we know Queensland's opened up some measures at the moment and they're by all no, no means have opened up everything. So um, you still need to have a continuity plan in place right now that's going to help you survive at the moment where you aren't able to fully trade uh, and then work your way into businesses, what the new business is normal will look like. Uh, the governments have obviously injected a lot of money into helping businesses survive uh, and get back to their uh, business as normal. But unfortunately, we know those cash injections are going to cease at some point in time or they're going to run out in regards to what you've been able to achieve for your business. Um, so we need to make sure we have a good plan in place that when those cash flow injections sort of cease, that you're not sort of going backwards in business and dipping into your own money. As I've mentioned through this, a broker can help you understand sort of your risk and your transfer of risk that you can purchase through insurance. Unfortunately, the COVID situation is a unique insurance and something that probably hasn't been tested in the insurance world before. Um, but we know typically infectious diseases are excluded from insurance policies. Um, and, it's, and it's something that may change in the future given this global pandemic, uh, but we're unsure what that looks like in our industry as well. So with that in mind, I guess they're just some key measures we feel in risk management we need to factor in. Um, I'm gonna pass you over to Kylie at the moment, um, who's gonna talk you through some of the insurance, uh, importance of insurance and how you continue in that path. Um, so over to you, Kylie. Thanks Ashley, and sorry I had some technical difficulties earlier. Um, today I'm gonna to talk you through some insurance considerations and why it's important to maintain certain coverages. Whilst you are still a registered business and own assets, you still have a risk exposure. In most circumstances, you would need to continue your insurance placement to protect you and your business. However, you might be able to make changes to your program to suit your current needs. Some exposures that you should keep in mind and discuss with your insurance broker include changes to your business operations. This is important because it can affect your coverage and your policy response in the event of a claim. You may have changed the way in which you're operating to accommodate the imposed restrictions or the new norm, things like drive-through operations, takeaways, delivery service, uh, online sales. It's really important that you talk to your broker about any changes to the way you're operating your business. Another point is reduction in turnover or employee numbers. This could result in savings to your premium in some circumstances. Um, another one is cyber risks, and we'll go into more detail about this one shortly. Management liability um, and employment risks. So early statistics show claims and employment disputes have risen over 60, sorry, risen over 60% since COVID-19 restrictions have been in place. Um, there is an insurance product that protects companies and their directors against claims arising from the management of the company. Uh, your business assets, have your stock levels reduced? Do you have vacant properties? Uh, have you moved equipment from the workplace to working from home arrangements? Do you have vehicles and vessels laid up that are not in use? Um, business interruption, that's a big one that we've had a lot of questions on. Um, basically, it protects you for loss of income following an insured event. So it is important to understand that this cover should be maintained even if the business is currently not trading, as it will protect you in the event of future losses when your business operations are able to open again. Um, a scenario would be if you had significant damage like a fire while the business is not operating, 
two weeks down the track, the government lifts restrictions, surrounding businesses are all returning to some form of normality. You could be entitled to make a claim under that for your lost income. If you've deleted that cover, you could potentially be another six to 12 months with no income coming in while you build, rebuild or repair. Uh, another important thing to note is we strongly believe businesses need to maintain coverage in some capacity. Insurance is becoming increasingly difficult to obtain in some locations and for some industries. It's also more difficult to obtain coverage at a competitive price for new placements. Can I have the next slide please, Ashley? Um, we're gonna talk a little bit about cyber. Um, in 2020, for the first time ever, Cyber risk was actually ranked number one commercial risk globally, representing a significant shift when compared to 2013, where it was ranked 15th. Cyber crime is affecting businesses both large and small, with an estimated cost to the Australian business community of more than $29 billion a year. Um, as businesses operate under remote working and the increased use of online trading conditions, the number of malicious cyber incidents reported in Australia is increasing. Cyber risk extends to lost passwords, credit cards, voicemail, ID cards that enable a perpetrator to access information, um, enabling fraudulent activity. So what is cyber risk? Cyber risk is unauthorized access to a computer system leading to a breach of privacy or data. Rant, how does this happen? Ransomware is a type of malicious software that's designed to block access to the, to the data and threatens to publish the data or permanently block the access unless a ransom is paid. Phishing and social engineering. Um, social engineering is a broad term that refers to scams usually by criminals to trick or deceive or manipulate their victims uh, into giving out confidential information or funds. We actually had an example of this locally during the COVID-19 situation where the attacker has intercepted invoices, changed the bank details, um, and our client has paid $50,000 into an incorrect bank account. Uh, distributed denial of service or DDoS, this targets websites and online services. The aim of this is to overwhelm them with more traffic than what the server can accommodate, and it renders the website or service inoperable. Sometimes it can be combined with an extortion threat or a ransom as well. So this is important where there's online booking, online sales. Uh, lost phones and USBs, as well as other portable devices, laptops, tablets, um, but also employee error, simply sending an email to the wrong recipient with um, sensitive information. This next slide runs through some key questions that you should be asking yourself about your business. Are staff educated about cybersecurity? Do they know how to identify a threat? Do they understand the importance of passwords? How are your networks secured? Do you use multi-factor authentication? Is the network segmented? Do you encrypt your portable devices? Is there a disaster recovery plan in place? Has this been tested? Who has access to your data? And do you outsource, use outsource suppliers? And if you do, what, what level of access do they have to your systems? And do your contracts clearly outline how the data will be handled? If you are not confident or comfortable with the answers to these questions, then it is really important that you reevaluate your cybersecurity. Remember, cyber crime insurance will not stop breaches happening, but it can cover the costs arising from that breach. Every business should consider this as an option. Remember, the first step to your cybersecurity. So the first step is your cybersecurity and doing what you can to prevent losses, but they can never be guaranteed. Having a cyber and privacy protection policy in place will ensure you are protected. The policy not only covers you for your own losses in terms of rectifying systems and data, um, data loss and restoration, but it also includes business interruption, reputational mitigation and crisis containment, but also fines and penalties and third party damages. And the risk is even higher now with remote and work from home arrangements. So what are the key messages? Privacy protection is important to an organization's reputation and must be designed to process, sorry, designed into processes and systems. Criminals can breach a system by technical weakness, human weakness, or brute force. Cybersecurity is not just an IT issue, it is a corporate governance issue. And it's important that you have appropriate risk management and understanding of regulatory obligations. 
cyber intrusions can create liabilities, imposing first party costs and even stop your business dead in its tracks. So in summary, all of what we've spoken about today highlights the needs to communicate regularly with your insurance broker to ensure your needs are being met. Insurers are flexible at the moment, but you do need to ask and not assume that you will be protected. Some examples include changing your business activities and operations, which we did touch on earlier. Uh, also deferred payments. This is being offered by insurers and premium funding providers in some circumstances, but you do need to consider if this really suits you. You need to keep in mind it is a deferral and it may mean that it impacts your cash flow negatively in the future when these payments need to be made up. Gallagher has also been able to negotiate rollover terms with our major partners. This means that where there are no significant changes to your business operations, renewals are being offered with no increase in premiums. We've done this to help our clients survive and maintain cost levels during this period. Brokers should also be providing tailored advice to your changing business needs. This can be difficult if you insure directly with an insurance company, as they generally will not provide you uh, advice on your personal circumstances. So it is preferable that you work with a broker to ensure appropriate personalised service. That's awesome. all from me. I'm gonna hand back to Ashley now. Oh, thanks, Carly. Um, so just to wrap up, so how can a broker support you? I guess we wanted to clear up the picture of what insurance brokers are about and what we're here to do and help you and your businesses. So insurance brokers are professional advisors who are um, an expert in insurance and risk management advice. Um, brokers work on behalf of their client, clients, not for the insurance industry. Um, it can be reply, relied to provide professional advice in your best interest. We help you identify your business risks uh, and risks that you can pass on to insurance companies and those that you should or could manage internally. Insurance is not about covering everything, every risk exposure you have. It's about covering those risks that you can't afford to cover in your own business. Um, we're, we're fully aware of terms and conditions of policies, benefits and exclusions that can apply and a wide range of uh, competing insurance policies. So help you find the most appropriate circumstance. Uh, as well as arranging and placing cover with your chosen insurer on behalf of brokers uh, and clients in the event of a client. So, so we can manage your, your claims in the event you have a, um, something happen to your property. So just to close from here, uh, I want to thank everyone for listening in today. I hope sort of these insights have sort of shared some things that are going on with the changes in COVID at the moment. Uh, it's highlighting some points around what you need to consider around risk management for your own business. Uh, we've highlighted some uh, insurance needs at this, this point in time and at any point in time. And I guess the importance of dealing with an insurance broker uh, against dealing with an insurance company directly who won't provide you any advice. Uh, and if you're dealing, I guess, lastly, if you're dealing with your insurance broker purely on price, uh, then you're probably not getting the right uh, advice and the right protection to your business. So with that in with mind, that in mind uh, we thank Tel for allowing us to present this today. Uh, hopefully you, you as members have been able to get something out of uh, the session. Uh, while we go through, I guess I wanted to share sort of a quick image of our team in North Queensland. And this is us doing some charity work last year with Ronald McDonald House. Hopefully we can get back to doing these sort of things closer in the future once COVID opens up um, or COVID restrictions open up again. Um, here are our contact details for myself and Kylie, should you reach, uh, need to reach out and ask any questions. Um, I'll also reference our blog. Um, the Gallagher blog is quite useful and there's a number of articles provided every week uh, that are relevant to the topics on hand. There's a lot of information around COVID uh, from a risk management, workplace risk, a insurance point of view that you can understand and obtain on that blog.
Um, feel free to have a look at that website at any time. You can register and gain updates on a weekly or daily basis if you like. Um, that's it from me. I'll just check if there's any, I can't see any questions that have come through at this stage. If you've got any questions, please feel free to shoot them through in the Q&A box. Great. Thank you so much, Ashley and Kylie. We really appreciate you taking the time um, to host this webinar today and to share all of this information with our members and the wider community. Um, again, if anyone does have any questions after this, um, please feel free to contact Ashley or Kylie directly or you can send them through to us via Vitel and we can forward it on to you. This webinar will be available online um, on Townsville Enterprise this afternoon, but we will also be sending out an email to all of the participants um, with a survey just for some feedback and also links through to the video so that you can um, watch it again if you want to um, or you can pass along to your own business contacts. Um, but once again, thank you all for coming and um, just a reminder that we do have another webinar planned for next Wednesday, which is on creating a WOW experience. So if you are interested, please head over to our website and register for that as well. But um, lastly, thank you, Ashley and Kylie. No worries. Thank Thanks, you. Megan.